what I'm doing. So very first thing, you've got this box. This box is not mandatory. It doesn't have to be clear. Um, it is highly suggested because see how it's flat top on the surface? There's gonna be different points in the exam where you're putting stuff on top of this lid. And so it kind of acts as like a little table. It is, again, not required, just very highly suggested. It makes everything so much easier. <laughs> Trying to do it with the bags that you got is a lot harder. Not impossible, just a lot harder. Um, the only stipulation with these boxes, and you might want to write this down, it is in the candidate handbook and all that kind of stuff, but it cannot be larger than 30 by 30 dimensions. And it means this way. 30 this way, 30 inches this way, 30 inches this way, because it has to fit under your station. So no larger than 30 by 30. And I have this box. Sorry, I'm out of frame. Sorry, YouTube. Hmm. Okay. I have this box packed like, the OCD in me is very happy with the way I did this yesterday. Like I finished yesterday and I was like, dang, look at that, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's like when you wrap the perfect Christmas gift. <laughs> okay, so I already have in brown different things that are going to be labeled. There are certain things in this exam that have to be labeled, certain things that cannot be labeled. Okay, so everything that does need to be labeled, I'm gonna write in brown on the board. And so, sorry YouTube, you can't see my entire board, but if you're here in class, take notes. Um, so we've got client one, client two, universal supplies, and then you see over here I have these three random things. These three random things are these. These are super, super important. Most of your grades on this exam come from these three bags. So these three bags are going to be labeled trash, items to be disinfected, and soiled linens. They need to be big paper bags. Food Lion, in my opinion, works the best because it's very plain, it's plenty big. Um, you can also use uh, solid colored gift bags, with, like the handles, like if they're big enough. Mm -hmm. Please don't um, get like designs on the bags because you have to see the writing. If you don't get, if you can't see the writing, the, the person grading you is gonna count off. Um, yes, they can, they count off for a lot. Also with these bags, you can get them at Aldi's or any grocery store really, but again, keep in mind of a pattern because if I don't see the writing, I'm not gonna give you the points because you're specifically graded on, are you disposing of your supplies properly? So you've, all of your trash needs to go in trash, all of your items to be disinfected needs to go in items to be disinfected, and all of your soiled linens need to go in soiled linens. So if I cannot tell what your bag is labeled, how am I supposed to know that you disposed of it in the correct manner? So another thing with these bags, you don't need to just write it on one side. You should write it on all four sides. Big, bold, capital letters. Now, I did not make these bags. Somebody donated them to me. Um, I don't have a big fat Sharpie, so I need to get one. But you see how I have a trash bag inside of it? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I keep walking out of my camera shot. So you see how I have a trash bag? This is called a liner. So every big bag needs a liner. It's just like, look at this as if it's a trash can. But you see how my liner kind of covers the top of my bag? What does that first word say? Can you see what that first word says? No, no. no because it's covered. So where do you think the writing should have been? Oh, right here, where they're gonna see it. So you need to have it on this side, this side, and in the little cracks. Big bold letters. Don't forget these liners. Get just regular trash bags, you guys, because they do work the best. Because you're gonna set these up on the floor. I know YouTube can't say that, but 
I'll put it up on my table. They're gonna sit on the floor just like this. Also, in other words, the wise, do not wait until the day of your exam to unfold these for the first time and put a liner inside. It's a whole process because they wanna fall over and like collapse and they need to stand up because if it falls over and collapses and you don't fix it, points off. If you fix it, you're fine, but there's a whole process. If you're gonna fix it, you have to sanitize your hands, get in there, really fix it, sanitize your hands again, and then get back to work. And that just takes up some time. So you want it to stand like this. So this trash bag goes all the way to the bottom. So no matter what I throw in this bag, fan brushes, pallets, anything I throw in this bag, this liner's not going anywhere because it's plenty big enough. So I have one liner right here. I put a small trash bag, like the kind of trash bags you put in the little trash cans beside your stations. That is what is in this bag. And when I try and stand it all the way up, my bag falls, then I gotta readjust my bag. And then throughout the exam, as I'm throwing stuff in here, that bag falls. That was a little aggressive, but you get the picture. The bag falls, and then I have to fix the bag the entire time, and that is really annoying for you and for me. So make sure you just get regular size trash bags. These size bags work the best. Any questions about the three bags? I take a lot of time explaining those because they're really important. Yes? I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I have a question, but do you by chance know what size the paper, the brown paper bags are? Like if you no. have any bags? No, I don't know. It's just a shopping bag. I don't. I mean, I have seen people use smaller bags. I just, I'm such an extra person as it is. I want to like be above and beyond with everything. So I just like a big old big bag. All right, any other questions about the bags? Awesome, we're gonna move on. Okay. So client one. Oh. Actually, you know what? Yes, we're gonna start with client one. So you're gonna have two separate clients in this exam. Um, client one, you're gonna do a facial. Client two, you're gonna do an eyebrow wax and tweeze and facial makeup. So just makeup application. The makeup application is not very pretty. It needs to look halfway decent, don't get me wrong, it can't look completely awful, but you're not really necessarily being graded on technique, you're more so being graded on infection control, um, which I mean, you also need to be safe, we're also grading you on client safety. Let me get this out of the way. We're grading you on client safety, so you need to be safe, use infection control, but a lot of times these babies, they come out, they look rough. Y'all know, you gotta do a makeup on a mannequin, it doesn't look, it's not cute. Um, but for client one, your bag does need to be labeled. I do need to relabel these. Guys, don't judge me. I use these for every freshman class. It is, yeah. So this does need a new label. If you can't see it, I'm gonna get it closer to the camera. This is client one, big bold letters. The examiner needs to be able to see that. All right. In my client one bag, I have my drape. So I have a shower cap and a, this is actually a washcloth. Those are the best size. Washcloth sizes are the best for the neck drape because it folds around the mannequin just in the right way. Here's my neck drape. Notice how it's in its own separate bag. In this little baggie, I have all of my disposable supplies. So everything that's gonna go in the trash is going in here. Notice this bag and my drape bag does not have a label. So there's no writing on it. It's not something I'm allowed to label. So I am gonna put under client one, let me find a good, green feels like a good color. We need drape. If I just put drape, do you guys know head and neck? Or do I need to specify? specify. Alright, so you need a drape. And 
And I'm actually, you're welcome. I'm gonna tell you the exact number of spatulas and two by twos you need. Nice. You're welcome. Mainly because they're already in here and it's just easier that way. I'll explain to you later why you need the amount that you need, but right now I'm just telling you what you need. So you are going to need, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I have 11 two by twos. Yes. What if you make an accident and put extra in there? Is that okay? Yes. Or no? Okay. Yes. It is always okay if you have extra. They would just get thrown away at the end. Okay. Or like at the end of like that portion. So when you're done with your facial and you have extra two by twos left on your station, before you continue, you would throw them away. So 11 two by twos. And I do that number 11, that does have a couple of extra in there, but only like two extra. All right, and then spatulas. So you can really use anything as a spatula. Um, I have these little guys, you can get these at Dollar Tree. There's little spatulas. Nice. These are my favorite to use because they're just like little shovels. So these are my favorite. Um, I also have popsicle sticks that look like this. These are a little big for my liking, but you can get smaller ones. So you just need something as spatulas. And you're gonna use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. All right, and so my items that get thrown away, that is all that is in this little baggie. Why do I have them in a separate bag? Because it's very close. There are items that will be discarded. So you cannot put disposable items and reusable items in the same container. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works when you're like setting up a spa or anything. Um, it also is, should be that way in your kits. As of right now, y'all's kits are pretty much perfect because you've not used them. But in the future, I'm also going to be checking for that to make sure you don't have fan brushes and two by twos in the same baggie. Nothing reusable and disposable can be in the same container. Any questions about that? Does that make sense to everybody? Cool. So that's what's in this bag. I also have one fan brush, one round brush. You all should have both of these. They were not, they were just in the client one bag because everything else in the client one bag is um, items to be disinfected. So it can all just be in the same bag together. So I just separated the items to be disinfected in the disposable item items with this little baggie. So everything else in here is items to be disinfected. So they're just in the bag. So I've got one round brush, one fan brush. What do you think you're gonna use the round brush for? Exfoliation. Yes, what do you think you're gonna use the fan brush for? The mask. To apply the mask. Yup. You guys are smart. All right, the last thing that goes in your client one bag is products. So for your products, you're gonna get little containers like this. So this is one of those things that's not in your kit right now. You'll have to go to the Dollar Tree. These are just little disposable ramekins. I've got this kind, and I've also got this kind. And so each one of these has to be labeled. I need to re rewrite the labels on some of these. See, that one says exfoliant. Um, my suggestion for your products is be label it on all sides and on the lid as well because that way when the examiner is coming by your station and they look, they can easily see that you have all of the products labeled because that's something you're gonna be graded on. 
Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna write these in brown so you know that they have to be labeled. So you need a cleanser. You need a toner. You need an exfoliant. You need a, ma a massage product. Mask. And moisturizer. I'm gonna put moisturizer slash SPF. So the only specification on your products, your mask must be colored. So the rest of the products, they don't care. Oh no, battery low. Sorry YouTube, I hope we can finish in time. <clears throat> Um, the rest of the products, they don't care what's in it. Most of this is lotion and hand sanitizer. So it's just labeled, like this is lotion, it's labeled moisturizer. Um, but the only thing they do care about is that mask. It does have to be a color. I will tell you if you use food coloring, it might stain your mannequin. My favorite thing for people to use, the Dollar Tree has a blue like clay mask that you can purchase. Don't ever use that on your face by the way. I shouldn't have to say that, but please. But it's blue and it's like a clay consistency. It works really, really well. And then this is my toner. So I'm like, it almost looks like a little um, shampoo, like travel size. Notice this is not a spray. Do you see that this is not, you don't spray it like the toner you use in the clinic? Mm -hmm. How am I gonna put this on my client's face? And that is on purpose. So do not bring a spray toner. It does need to be in something like this. Is that like water and soap? I don't know what it is. I think it's just water. <laughs> and it was labeled astringent and I covered it and labeled it toner. Yes. So when we use the products in the ramekins, do we have to throw away the ramekins at Skateboard? Great question. So she asked um, if when we use these, because like this is disposable. Like if I was to use this every day, if you're at, at like a restaurant, these get thrown in the trash. But at Skateboard, it does not. Because what they see when you use these, it's like you're playing tea party. It's like you're pretending you got tea and biscuits, but you know, you really don't have tea and biscuits. You've got like some water and grass. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking at this as if it is a Dermalogica cleanser, moisturizer. That's what they see. So they're playing pretend. Like even though we all know this normally would get thrown away, they're looking at it like a real product that has to be disinfected, okay? So the reason it has to be disinfected is because it's gonna be on my workstation with my client. So when that client leaves, these need to be disinfected before it goes back in my cabinet. Now the cabinet doesn't really exist, but again, we're playing tea party. So to recap our client one bag, we've got our drape, we've got our disposables, 11 two by twos, seven spatulas, and then we've got our fan brush and our round brush. We have our toner. We have our cleanser, exfoliant, massage, mask, and moisturizer slash SPF. That's it for the client one bag. Any questions about client one bag? Yes. Um, on the website, it mentions a zip bag containing three damp washcloths, they're both steam towels. Yep, getting to that next. Okay. That's fine. It is in a clean clothing, so I was going to say, I'm going to need a second one, but it's not going to be 
Right. Because the products are going to be disinfected at the same time the implements are going to be disinfected. Okay. The two sandwich bags don't need to be labeled or they can't be They labeled? cannot be labeled. Okay. The only thing in this bag that can be labeled is client one and the product. Okay. okay. Something else that goes with client one that's not going in this bag, Miss Rebecca pointed it out to us, is going to be our steam towels. Keep dropping my markers. These do need to be wet when you go to state board. When you come here, I don't have you wet them because if you keep them wet in this plastic bag, they get stinky. So, at state board, they do have to be wet though. You only need three of these. So you need a decent sized bag. I think these might be two gallons. Um, the smaller ones I had are called sandwich bags. Um, you need some pretty big ones for the steam towels because those guys, they take up a lot of space. So I'm gonna write steam towels over to the side. And I'm writing it in a uh, brown so you know to label them. Um, steam towels need to be a hand towel size. I'm going to show you what that looks like. If you don't know the difference between a washcloth and a hand towel. This is a hand towel. This works the best for a steam towel. A steam towel has to cover their entire face except the nose. If you bring a towel too small and it does not cover the entire face, you get points off. If you don't use your steam towel properly, you get points off. What should you do with a steam towel before it goes on a client? Test it. Yep. If I don't see you test it, you get points off. So I don't care if you have to stand there for three minutes solid like this until we lock eyes. You don't move on from this until we look at each other in the eyeballs. I take off a lot of points for that. You just roll those up, put them in as a clock. Once I take all of this stuff out of my box, write it on the board, then I'm going to put it in my box and show you how to put it in the box. After I'm done with this part, I'm going to take apart these bags and let you guys take pictures of everything in the bags if you'd like to. All right, that brings me to our next baggie. That is Universal Supplies. It does need to be labeled. No, this is just a separate, a separate thing. Universal Supplies, YouTube you can't see, but I have Universal Supplies written right here in brown. Your Universal Supplies do need to be labeled boldly and clearly that is something you're graded on. Are Universal Supplies labeled in English? If I don't see your label, I say no. Because I don't know if they're labeled in English because I didn't see the label. Also, when I go to set this on my station, because this one's only labeled on that side, not on that side. When I go to lay this on my station and I put it face down, you can't see the label at all. So you need to pay attention to that when you're setting up your stuff. Make sure whoever is grading you can see all of your labels. So I'm going to put that face up. Can we label both sides? Yes, you can label both sides. All right, so let's see what's in this bag. I've got my water. Water does need to be labeled water. I do not suggest this kind of bottle. The kind of bottle we had for the toner, that little shampoo looking one, mm -hmm. that is the best kind to use. It does need to be labeled water though. This one spills and makes a mess. You want one that has a lid that can close. And there's only like one time in the entire exam that you use the water and it's for the facial. We've got our water. I am gonna write that in brown so you know to label your water. You also need your first aid kit. 
Um, my first aid has rubbed off, but it needs to be labeled first aid, so I'm writing that in brown. Um, blood spill is a little bit different on state board than it is when you do it in the clinic for your five packs. It's not very different, just a little bit different. So we'll get into later when we go into client, when we talk about client two later, I'll tell you what all is in your first aid bag for state board. But that needs to be labeled. And you need hand sanitizer. The hand sanitizer has to be original packaging. You cannot bring in a Dollar Tree bottle like, like I told you to use for the water and for the toner. You can't bring one of those and label it hand sanitizer. It has to be an actual hand sanitizer. And does it have to be like the gel one? Or, I, I, have the, I have the spray ones already. But. It doesn't specify. Um, I would prefer the gel kind so you can really thoroughly get all over the hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can with the spray, go for it. I just, I think these are work easier. And I will say the pump kind work a lot faster than the kind that has to open like this. So it does have to be original packaging for hand sanitizer. And that's all the stuff that has to be labeled in that bag. So I'm done with my brown marker for right now. All right, here I have an extra bag of two by twos. So if I forgot to put the right amount of two by twos in my client one bag or client two bag, I'm like, oh crap, I need more two by twos. Or if you drop them or whatever the case might be, if you need an extra, you've got this. Now, the reason I can have this in the bag like it is, is because it's resealable. So it has like that Ziploc opening and closing on it. And so it's resealable, and so it can just go in there like it is. If you don't have a resealable container, you can just put them in a Ziploc bag. And I've got extra two by twos. These are not required to have extras. It's just smart, and you know, you might drop it. You might have to use more than the amount of two by twos you thought you would have to use. It's always good to have those. I have an extra fan brush. I just went ahead and put this one in a baggie just to be safe. And then right here, I have a whole bag of just a bunch of disposable supplies. So I've got spatulas, eyebrow uh, wax strips, disposable spoolies, um, alcohol prep pads, which you'll use in client two, and a Q-tip. So just a bunch of disposable extras. If I drop one of my spatulas, because I told you the exact number, you need seven spatulas for client one. Well, what if you drop one of those spatulas? What are you gonna do then? I'm gonna go in my universal supplies, get out an extra spatula. If you wanted to avoid having to do that, you could just put like eight spatulas in your client one bag and just have to throw away the extra. But I don't like to keep extras or at least not too many extras in my client bags. I wanna keep all my extras in my universal supply bag. I have extra Q-tips right here. This is also a resealable bag. Then I have extra gloves. How many of y'all have tried to put on a pair of gloves and they break? Mm -hmm. and it's gonna happen because you're gonna be sanitizing your hands a lot. How many of you have ha tried to put on gloves on wet hands? It's really hard, right? So you want extra gloves because they're probably gonna break. You might drop one, you know, whatever the case might be. So I've got my extra gloves. These are not labeled. No label on them whatsoever. Any questions about my universal supply bag? Awesome. This is going way faster than I thought it would. And if you notice, I try and put, like, when I'm putting the stuff back in these bags, I try to put, like, the biggest stuff on the bottom and the smallest stuff on the top. Um, and in my client bags, I try and put, like, the products on the bottom and, like, the other smaller stuff on top. Um, or I try and put it in the order of which I'm going to use it. I try to just go about it really, really. I have, like, a method to everything when I'm packing this. This is not something to, like, 
just go about all willy-nilly. All right, last chance. Any questions about universal supplies? Pretty simple. It's extras and your hand sanitizer and water and first aid kit. Oh, I didn't put, what else is in here? Extra disposables. Extra gloves. Something that is considered universal supplies, but it doesn't go in the bag, is a roll of paper towels. You guys can use these for literally almost anything in this exam. These paper towels are like a lifesaver. You use them a lot. You got product on your hand and you wanna remove it before moving on to the next step, paper towel. And that can be loose in the box? Yes because there's a way for you to disinfect it and that's by like unrolling one layer, tearing it off, throwing it away. And these can be on your station throughout the entire exam and so can that universal supplies bag. Your client one bag does ne never goes on your station. Like you empty it and put the contents on your station. But these paper towels and that universal supply bag, they do go on your station. So one of these, you don't need really expensive paper towels. You can get them at the Dollar Tree and they work just fine. I like the ones that have the option of the small, like almost like half mm -hmm. size, because then you can really measure out how many of those you want. One of these. And then disinfectant wipes. These do have to be actual wipes. During COVID, they were allowing people to use like baby wipes or wet paper towels because disinfectant wipes were really hard to come by. Well, now that isn't the case and State Board has said it does have to be real disinfectant wipes. It has to be EPA registered and it has to be effective against, let me make sure it says it on here, bacteria, viruses, coronavirus, kills cold and flu. Um, what else? It says effective against, I'm looking for it. So Clorox wipes are fine? Yes, as long as it's a disinfectant that says it kills, it has to be, it's also on the walkthrough. If anybody has that in front of them, if you wanna share what it says exactly on the walkthrough. Bactericidal, virucidal, fungicidal, has to be effective against like HIV, the flu, coronavirus. While you're in school, the walkthrough does say we let you use um, like baby wipes in a bag if you want to, so you're not wasting a bunch of real disinfectant wipes because they're not really cheap. So these you can't, you can't buy at the Dollar Tree. I'm sorry, I guess I lied about that part. But you also don't have to get these until you go to Real Estate Board. Well, some Dollar Trees, if you catch it, they do have like the travel pack wipes all wipes in the Clorox. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Just check like right when you come in, yeah. like normally. Somewhere in the front. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to write this in brown because it should have a manufacturer's label on it. And these don't go in the universal supplies bag. They're kind of just in the, in the kit. So when I like put the kit all together, you'll see what I mean by that. So they don't really go in the universal supplies, but they are considered a universal supply. All right, something else that I have in here. I have a Ziploc baggie with two hand towels. Can you guess what these are used for? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey. This is going to be the protective covering for your station. Hand towel is the perfect size. I will only accept a hand towel or a puppy pee pad. Puppy pee, yeah. They work really good though, because they're flat and um, they're disposable. And you can fold them up really small. They work really well. Things I will not accept. A big old beach towel. 
I will not accept pillowcases. Um, and keep in mind, every school teaches this different. So you might hear other people who are in school say like, oh yeah, we don't do that. We do what we do for a very specific reason. We want you guys, when you go to take state board, they're not supposed to know where you came from, but they're gonna know where you came from because of how well you do this exam, how organized you look, you're gonna walk in there with confidence, you're gonna, every one of you are gonna do it the exact same way. And if you do it the exact same way, you will pass every single time. Yes? So, um, the client, the teachers are doing that so they like a facial alignment and then a license promotion. Mm -hmm. Oh, was that the question that we're doing facial with one and waxing with the other? Yeah, I was asking, was that going to be the exact way that the state board did it? Mm -hmm. Yep, it does not, that part does not change. The only thing that really changes, um, they might change up the, the blood spill, but they always update on the website before a change happens. I mean, they've changed things like before you didn't do waxing or something like that. So they made small changes here and there. They always update the website first and tell you when it goes into effect. So we try to keep up with that, but once you're out of here, it's your responsibility to uh, look at that. But yes, no beach towels, no big towels. You don't get very much space. You're very cramped with space. And so you want that towel to cover your entire work area in any of my work area that is not covered with the towel, I can use my paper towels to cover because none of my supplies, like my paper towels, my wipes, my bags, none of that stuff, my mannequin, it cannot go on the table itself. All of these things have to go on a protective covering just like you would in the clinic with your carts. Just how you were taught to line your carts before you put your supplies on it, you do the exact same thing at state board. And so none of your stuff can go on the table. It all has to go on a protective covering. So you're gonna use two of those because you got two clients. So they're just gonna go in this bag. They're gonna hang out in my kit um, and they stay in there. The only time this bag comes out of the kit is after client two, when you're setting up for client two and you're almost done with the exam, you take out the bag to throw it away. That's the only time that bag comes out. I will say too, um, as I'm showing you guys all of this, the bags that are the easiest are these kind. The kind that snap are just more difficult because every bag you open, you have to seal it before it goes back on your station. This bag is not labeled, it's just plain. In this baggie, I have two pairs of gloves. And I will say, um, get gloves that fit good. You don't want loose fingertips because it, they get in the way and they make a mess and it's just a pain. Um, I know putting on tight gloves is difficult, but if you can just get in the habit of it, having really nice fitting gloves that are tight to your hand work best. So I've got two pairs of gloves and these are just in a baggie and they hang out they're not coming out of the kit either. When I very first start the exam, the first thing I'm gonna do when I open my box is I'm gonna set up my three bags that I showed you in the beginning, and then I'm gonna open this bag, pull out one pair of gloves, close this bag back, and put on one pair of gloves and leave this in there. I can't take it out of the kit, because once something comes out of the kit, it cannot go back into the kit for any reason whatsoever. I can go back in the kit for anything I ever need throughout the entire exam, but for no reason ever are you allowed to put something that was out of your kit back inside. Any questions about that? <coughs> Once you take something out of the box, mm -hmm. it cannot go back in the box at any point for any reason. So even at the end, when it's time to leave, you can't put anything in that box. That box, once it's out, it's out. So with these gloves, they never, the bag that these gloves are in, they, these uh, this bag never comes out of the box. Okay, so you can go in the box, grab what you need, and put it down. Okay. But never take it all the way out. But never take it all the way out. Right. Just grab I don't take this bag out. I just take the gloves out of it. 
So I bent down, or I bend down, open it, take my gloves out, close it. I never took that bag out here. Inside my kit is considered clean and sanitized. Outside of my box is considered dirty and contaminated. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's in the clean area, mm -hmm. it's clean. But as soon as it comes out here, it can't go back in. But what do you think I should do before, if I'm like over here working on my area and I need to go in my kit and it's clean, but I've been over here working with my hands, what should I do before I go into my box? Sanitize. Yep, wash and sanitize your hands. So I've got a baggie with two pairs of gloves. One pair of gloves is gonna be for client one. One pair of gloves is going to be for client two. Okay, client two. So I've got that written in brown. You're gonna label your client shoe bag. We're gonna go through everything that goes in your client shoe bag. This one is a little bit tricky because there's a little bit more that goes in this bag. So here's my client shoe bag. It is labeled. Please don't fall markers. You know what, they're going in my pocket. <laughs> Still, <laughs> still fell. <laughs> okay. If you go back and watch previous videos I've done, I drop things off. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to pull that out first. I don't know why I pulled that out first. <laughs> so just like with my client one, I have my drape. My drape is not labeled. I have the head drape and the neck drape. I do want to point something out. Um, yesterday when I was putting this bag together, I couldn't find a small washcloth. And in this one, I have a big hand towel. These are really difficult to use as client neck drapes because it's so big and bulky and it gets in the way. So really a hand cloth, hand cloth, washcloth. washcloth is better than a hand towel to use for the client draping. Hand towels are only good for table covering or for steam towels. But for the purpose of demonstration, I had a towel. So do you need to have shower caps or like the headband? Um, shower caps. I'm glad you asked to specify. Because maybe a shower cap. Okay. And I'll be showing you how it goes on the mannequin. You'll see why it needs to be a shower cap. So you got your drape for client two. The first thing you're gonna do for client two is going to be hair removal of the eyebrow using simulated soft wax and tweezing. So here in this bag, I've got my supplies, my disinfectable supplies for my hard wax and for tweezing. So in this bag, notice it is not labeled. I have my products. I forgot to put something in here. No, I didn't. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. I've got powder that's labeled powder. You can use baby powder or cornstarch. You don't need a lot. Um, I try and reiterate that with every class. You don't need a lot of powder because you don't use a lot of powder. Yes. So we use flour? Yeah, flour is okay too. Okay. It just needs to be labeled powder. Okay. Notice how these ramekins are smaller. You can use this size for your facial supplies as well if you like this size. I personally like this size better. Small. So I've got powder. I have soft wax. You can put anything in the soft wax. It just has to be labeled soft wax. And this one is on the lid and on the side as with my powder. It's on the lid and on the side. So if the, if the examiner walks by and they look at the top, they can clearly see my products labeled. And then I have post epilation. So post epilation means different things to different people. Basically, your post epilation is your soothing gel. But instead of labeling soothing gel, we're labeling it post epilation because that's what it says on the candidate handbook. The candidate handbook that tells you what to do for the test does not specify what kind of post epilation product to use, whether it be wax remover or soothing gel or whatever the case might be. So we're just labeling post epilation because we don't want there to be any confusion. So we've got powder, soft wax, post epilation, and then I also have my tweezers in that same bag. 
because they get disinfected. These are tiny little tweezers. Tweezers, post epilation, soft wax, powder. I'm getting marker on myself. So I'm gonna write tweezers. And then in brown, I'm gonna write my products because they need to be labeled. Well, I need you guys. I need you guys to have this by Monday so we can do it. Got it. You're going to be doing it for a grade um, on the 31st. Okay, so Monday we just like put the box together or whatever. So for the soft wax, are we actually purchasing purchasing our own soft wax to put into the? No, I said you could put anything in it. Okay. So I could put honey in there if I wanted to. Yep. Honey does make a mess though. Lotion works the best. Okay. Lotion works the best. All right. Next, I've got disposable supplies for my waxing. It's going to be alcohol prep pads, two by twos, and spatulas. Notice this bag is also not labeled. Why do you think I have alcohol prep pads? Cleanse the, skin. cleanse the skin. So with a waxing procedure, you're going to cleanse before and after you wax. That's what these prep pads are for. You also cleanse before and after you tweeze. So total, you need four alcohol prep pads. Two for wax, two for tweezing. We're gonna have two waxed strips. One of these is gonna be used for when you test the wax on the inside of your wrist, which by the way, actually has to go on your skin. You can't mimic that, it has to be for real, which that's also why um, lotion works the best because honey gets sticky. So we've got one strip to remove that wax off of our wrist. The other strip is to wax the eyebrow. So two wax strips. You don't have to wax both brows, you just have to do it. Okay. Do we need like physical real wax strips? Um, you can use two by twos. You can cut them up. Because you guys didn't get the same wax kit that other classes got. Other um, classes, they got wax strips in their mm -hmm. kit. You guys did get some? We set the cup. Yeah, you can use those. Yes. Yeah. yeah, use those. They're perfect. All right, let's see how many two by twos you're gonna need. Oh, I dropped a stick. One, two, three. So you need three two by twos. And then you need one, two, three, four sticks. One stick you're gonna to use to get powder out with, put it on a two by two and apply to the brow. Um, the next one you're gonna to use to test the wax. The next one you're gonna to use to apply the wax. And then the last one you're gonna use is for the post epilation. For the two by twos, you're gonna use one of those to apply the powder. One of them to put the hairs that you tweeze during the tweezing, you're gonna put those in a two by two, and then the last two by two is for your post epilation product. So that's all my disposables for waxing. None of it is labeled, so I wrote it all in green. All right, the next part of client two is makeup. So in this baggie, again, not labeled, I have all of my makeup. Luckily, you guys already have most of this. I also have a palette. 
You can get these at the Dollar Tree. Um, you can really use any kind of palette, um, like of any kind. Um, some people, if they forget a palette, sometimes have used paper towels. That's fine too. You just have to have something to dispense your product onto. So we've got a palette. We have got liquid foundation, facial powder, blush, eyeshadow, eyeliner. Remember, you guys need a pencil eyeliner. I have my pencil sharpener. I'm not really gonna need to use it, but I have it just in case. My mascara and my lipstick. So all of these are gonna be going into my items to be disinfected bag when I'm done with them so they can all go in the same bag. The way we show disinfecting the eyebrow, or sorry, the eyeliner pencil is by sharpening it. So the only time you would have to demonstrate that is if you drop this. If you drop this on the ground, you have to pick it up, wipe it with a wipe, sharpen it, and then continue. Yes? Um, we need powder foundation. Yes, that's what the facial oh. powder is for. So it should look like this. And you guys already have it. Oh. It's this kind right here. So are we not allowed to use the makeup bag we have in our kit? It has to be in the disposable plastic bag? No, you can use the makeup bag you got in your kit. It would just go in items to be disinfected instead of the trash. If okay. it was in something like this, it would go in trash. Okay. It's a good question. Yeah, so the one you guys got. Perfectly, perfectly good. See how hard of a time I am having getting this back seal it. All right, and for my makeup, I have all of my disposable supplies for my makeup. Now, yesterday I could not find cotton balls, um, and you need cotton balls, so I have two by twos instead of cotton balls. So you guys write down cotton balls. Your makeup does need to be labeled, but fortunately for you, you already have the makeup and it's already in manufacturer's packaging, so you don't have to add a label to it. Like, my foundation already says foundation. I don't have to write on there. So all of the makeup you guys have is already labeled. Do we need makeup brushes or something? I'll show you. Mm -hmm. oh. reusable stuff. Here I have my disposable stuff. So for my liquid foundation, I have a cosmetic wedge. So a sponge. You need a, a spatula to scrape out your powder, and I'll tell you in a little bit exactly how many spatulas you need. Um, but you're actually, I can just go ahead and tell you, you're gonna need one, two, three, four. Four spatulas. Your spatulas are gonna be used to scrape out product for your powder, blush, eyeshadow, and lipstick. So total four spatulas. And to apply the facial powder, you're gonna use a cotton ball. To apply your blush, you're gonna use another cotton ball. So you need two cotton balls. Just need one. 
put an extra two by two in there to clean up around the lips if I need to after um, I apply lipstick. And here I also have a disposable spoolie for my mascara. I have an eyeshadow applicator. Did you guys get these in your kit? Yes. Perfect, yeah. so eyeshadow applicator. And then you want to use a Q-tip to apply your lipstick. You could also use the eye, a different, a new one, a new eyeshadow applicator. You can use these to apply lipstick too, if you wanted to. So either Q-tip or these. So total that was four spatulas, an eyeshadow applicator, Q-tip, disposable spoolie, one sponge, two cotton balls. Yeah. Yeah. And things that you can reuse, reuse. Um, so like those wax strips, sometimes you don't, you can just reuse those. Some of your two by twos don't really get anything on them. So you can just at the end of your exam, go through everything. If anything is savable, save it and reuse it. All right. So cosmetic sponge, four spatulas, two cotton balls. Eyeshadow applicator, Q tip, and spoolie. And all of that goes in one unlabeled bag. So I'm going to put in my client one bag. I am putting my makeup in first, the disposable supplies next palette in next because that's what I'm doing second on client two and then I'm putting my wax products my wax disposables on top because that's what I'm doing first on client two and then I'm putting my drape on the very top because that's the very first thing I need to pull out of my client two bag all right so that is it for packing okay it for packing and then of course got this guy <laughs> yep so again to reiterate guys everything in brown is to be labeled everything in green is not labeled 